Hey there Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the test bench. Today I'm going to be continuing to try out Citadel Color Contrast. In this case, Contrast Apothecary White. I'm going to be doing so over a base coat of Wraithbone using this Privateer Press bone construct that came with Barnabas Lord of Blood. So I had the opportunity to use this Apothecary White already. I did some paint testing uh, just last week with Ash from Gorilla Miniature Games. We just kind of hung out, talked, tried out some colors. And at the time, I was really not too impressed with this color, but I also had used it over a base coat of Vallejo Surface Primer, which was a little bit on the cool gray side. Which, as you can see, this color itself is a little bit of cool gray. It's got just that little hint of blue in it that makes it look cold. Whether something's a little bit blue or a little bit red is really what we mean when we say something is either hot or cold, or warm or cool. And in this case, I'm using a Wraithbone base coat, which itself is a warm white. You know, it's white with just a little bit of a, like a peachy or a sandy tone to it. And that makes it look just a little bit, a little warm, a little, a little more lively. And so I'm kind of using a cool shadow over a warm mid-tone when this is done. And that can give you some really interesting looks. So this may actually work in some cases better over, say, the... So it's possible Apothecary White might look better in a lot of cases over a base coat of Gracier instead, or even Pure White. But we're going to test this out regardless, because that's the color I prime these bones. Now, because I'm not trying to paint any details on here, I can just slap this on the entire model. If I were trying to pick out some areas in a certain color, like maybe I wanted these ribs to be a different color, I'd have to be careful to avoid them with this color to make room for whatever I do next. Because these contrast colors do tint pretty heavily when they hit something, you need to make sure if you're trying to use some of them in adjacent areas, that they don't overlap, you don't kind of spill them across. Now with this particular one, Apothecary White, it might not matter quite so much because it's a little on the lighter side compared to what I've seen from the other ones so far. And I completely missed the bottom of this arm. I'm doing good, guys. And this can actually be sort of the problem with this method of painting is you need to make sure you get everything kind of in one go. You can't really come back and do touch-ups because when you overlap the tint in adjacent areas like that, you'll get different effects than you would just getting it right the first time. Because it's translucent, you know, if you get it on an area twice, it'll have a different effect than just putting it on once. Alright, I'm going to leave this to dry for a little bit and come back and see how it looks. Alright, so here we have the bone construct with the Apothecary White fully dry. And this one's actually really interesting. It left the Wraith bone almost entirely alone, and what it really did was outline the model. Um, there's very few areas where it actually did any real pooling and tinting. You know, it's kind of on the underside of some bones and stuff where it did, but otherwise what it really did was just define each of the parts of the model from each other and really left that base coat intact which was itself almost a white. 
So my first impressions of Apothecary White were not really that great. I had used it on a model that had just been primed with Vallejo Surface Primer in white. And there's a little bit of a zenith look to it just because of how it had been primed. And because it was done zenithal priming, the white was subdued just a little bit by the darker color it was being applied over. And what ended up happening is the Apothecary White, this gray color that it produces in the joints, was basically the color the model already was. It just wasn't that punchy enough, bright enough to really accommodate this. Now this model here being base coated with Wraithbone, I definitely can see that the Apothecary White works really well with it. Now these bones are very white, so if you were looking for sort of a picked clean kind of bone look, I could see this really really working to kind of convey that feel. Now of course, as the name implies, Apothecary White would probably do really, really well for tinting apothecaries, which of course wear white armor into battle. And things like white scars, or even a really interesting dark Eldar army done in a white, I think would benefit from this color as well. I also could see taking the Apothecary White and adding just a tiny bit of another color like a vibrant blue to just kind of push it in a certain direction, either make it a little more blue, a little more red, etc. Just to give a bit of a supernatural feel to the color. And I hope I have time to test that out in the near future. Hey, if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new videos. You can also join me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evenings at 8.30 p.m. Eastern for live painting and sculpting shows. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps cover the cost of paint, models, and all my video production gear, but more importantly, it helps keep food in my kid's belly and a roof over his head. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers, both past and present. Your ongoing support and encouragement is really what makes this possible. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.